<laughs> Hello, everybody. Right, another we've just made it. Sorry, we're a bit late. Uh, it's always been a bit of a rush. We've been in clinic all day. It's the infant feeding team at the John Radcliffe Hospital. Uh, first day, uh, ask questions and answers uh, session with with RC infant feeding team. So that's anything to do with feeding. It's not just breastfeeding. It's anything at all to do with feeding. So if you're um, giving right, formula to a baby, oh, if you're doing um, breastfeeding and bottle feeding, if you are expressing and giving bottles, anything at all that you want to talk about, if you're weaning a baby, if you're wanting to talk about, um, you know, introducing food or uh, breastfeeding with uh, solids, that's what that's what we're here for, uh, anything at all. And uh, we are on level seven, which, which is where our new office is, and we found a very nice room uh, today. So um, we have a lovely view. We can see out, out of the window right across Oxfordshire, all the way across Oxfordshire, and uh, it's very yep. beautiful. <clears throat> uh, I hope you've managed with all the hot weather in the last week. It's been quite difficult with sleep and um, cooling off and everything. And having baby skin to skin is always uh, an interesting <laughs> concept when uh, it's 40 degrees in your sitting yeah. room. Uh, but um, hopefully you've all managed and you've got through it, and we're going to have a bit of respite, I think, in the next few days it's going to cool down again which yeah. is double-edged because we don't really want it do we um, so this is a say just for infant feeding so if you've got questions about scans or anything else to do with your pregnancy or visiting or um, anything else then uh, direct those questions to the correct forum so it might be ask the midwife questions or it might be to your own midwife area or you can look at the JR website that's always updated every day and um, hopefully you'll get the answer that you need there. Uh, but we may not know the answer, so don't ask it to us, because we, uh, we might give you the wrong answer, we'll and then you'll be really upset. We'll and just we say <laughs> don't know, absolutely we're good at saying that. So, um, so yes, yeah, so we look forward to having lots of questions. It took a while last week for us to filter them through, so hopefully this week yeah. we'll be a little bit more successful with them. I had them. to keep refreshing last week um, for it So to hopefully work. we haven't seen anything come yet, but we are seeing some uh, people across the top we can see little circles on our phone we're sitting in front of a phone uh, looking at ourselves which is always a very strange feeling we've got a thumbs up which is rather nice already that's great. We which like is thumbs lovely up. that's yeah. really lovely yeah and we do like your really silly questions as much as um you know the sensible questions and also how you're getting on we have uh, our regulars that we look forward to hearing about and they tell us about the progress that's going on in their lives mm -hmm. and um you know anything that you feel that you'd like to benefit from. If you'd like a session of anything, then we can um, put that together and uh, give that to you as well. So, you know, if you've got anything that you find you'd like to know more about, then tell us because, um, you know, we like we like to have uh, some clues and we normally ask people uh, in clinic and uh, on the wards and things before we do this session over the week between each session about uh, what they would like to hear. So we do get lots of um, really good ideas and one of the idea, one of the things that was uh, posted to me, I was working on Sunday and I got a phone call from somebody and um, she said that she fell asleep with her hacker on. Now a hacker is like a little squishy thing if you don't know with um, uh, a funnel on the end and you just put it, it's a breast reliever rather than a breast pump and you just put it on your breast perhaps when you're feeding on the other side and you collect drip, drip breast milk from it and then uh, you know you, you get collection of milk and so uh, this hacker she, she fell asleep overnight and left it on by accident and she had a huge blister on the end of her nipple at the end of it so I said right I'm going to talk about that because I don't want anyone else to get that because it's very very painful so be warned you know don't think if you leave it on and just fall asleep that you'll make more milk or you'll get more milk collected um you could damage yourself and really hurt yourself so um just to be aware of that and to look after yourselves and i know how awfully tiring it is when you're breastfeeding and uh, you get that um, absolute tiredness that you can't describe and you don't remember half the things you do and you think your baby's still in bed with you and it's in the cot and you don't remember what time you fed and all of those things because you're so so exhausted so just be careful don't i mean they're great yourselves. they have a really good place the, um, yeah. the hackers they're fantastic so if you're feeding on one side they encourage leaking because what they put is negative pressure which is why this poor mum ended up with a blister so they are really good but it's don't don't leave them on and you know they don't leave them on and uh, you know they're not pumps they call themselves pumps but they're not pumps they are just encouraging 
um, milk leakage really, as opposed to pumping. A pump, a pump has a, an you know an action going with Mechanism. it. It's a, mm -hmm. yeah, it's literally it's it's um, putting pressure, relieving pressure, putting pressure, relieving pressure. Whereas this is just negative pressure encouraging leaking. So it is quite a different um, thing to an actual pump. It's a breast reliever as such. But um, we have, we'd never heard of anything like that. We have had another mum who was using a hacker who was having problems with um, what we call blocked nipple pores or blebs, which are just, you know, you have about nine um, little um, holes at the end of your nipple, round nine, and sometimes they get blocked. Um, and this has happened to this mum, and she put the hacker on to try and, you know, sort of help get the milk moving. And that bleb cleared, and she said she literally got this long stringy bit of, like, cheesy um, milk Spaghetti. that came out of the nipple. And then the hacker, and we'd never heard that that could happen before. We've helped many women clear blebs and little blocked nipple pores, um, but not thought of using a hacker before. So mm. so they are, they do they're have a place, they do have they? a place, but, yeah. uh, but they're not pumps and don't leave them on. So yeah. for a long period of time. And, and uh, just as, uh, as an addendum on that one, if you do collect your milk from, from your uh, breast with one, um, just be careful that you don't take it out before you breastfeed because if you breastfeed on one breast and then uh, you, you know your baby's perhaps not gaining very much weight and then you swap to the next breast and you have had the hacker on, you might have got 30 mils in your hacker that's been taken out of your breast for your baby, from your baby feeding. So um, they lose out on the calories and then you have to give that milk back to your baby that it could have got while it was breastfeeding. Mm. So it's always better perhaps to use it after a feed, unless you don't feed on both breasts. And most babies do want in the early days to feed on both breasts. Um, it's probably not a good idea to put it on one side while you're breastfeeding on the other as you're trying to establish feeding because you might, your baby might miss out on calories. And the other thing to say is that it is, it is dripped breast milk so it is absolutely brilliant milk it's got everything that you need but it hasn't got the fat in it often not because as much it's, anyway. the, it's the milk that comes when you first start feeding it's the sort of um, from the first ejection reflex that you get which uh, is dripped and so it may not have the same fat so it might be worth mixing it with some express milk just to, to um, give it a little bit more of a mixed uh, composition and so if you're topping your baby up and you're giving drip breast milk to your baby, and this is for anything you collect in a shell or whatever else, mm. uh, it's not, it hasn't got all the fat in as well. So you might find that you need to just mix it with some other milk uh, to, to sort of balance it out before you give it as a top up um, because it will have less fat in it. But it's perfectly good milk, it's absolutely fine. It's what your baby gets at the beginning of a feed and then as the feed goes on they get more fat and the the fat is sort of on little ducts in, in your breast and it, it sort of is um, sucked out stripped of the ducts, it's stripped off yeah. the ducts and they get big blobs of fat with the um, lots of um, watery milk and then as the feed goes on and the fluid in your breast goes down then they get more fat as they're suckling more um, deeply into the breast then there's more fat comes out but actually there is always fat in the breast if, their baby, if your baby is suckling or if you're pumping but drip, drip breast milk doesn't do the same. So it's perfectly fine. So but it just again, the hacker, if, you're the, if you have a single pump um, and you're, pump, you know, you're pumping to meet your baby's needs and actually using a hacker on the other side is a really good idea because mm. one thing the breasts do together is let down. So you could put a hacker on one side and pump on the other. And so what will happen is, is when the let down reflex happens into the breast, which regardless of whether you can feel it or not, will be happening. And um, the minute you start seeing milk, it's happened. Um, so if you're pumping on one and you've got a hacker on the other or equivalent, there are other makes, um, then actually that you will be collecting milk then. Mm. And then you could put the two together. Yeah. If you only have the hacker milk, then you know, the, or drip milk, then actually it just means your baby may not go quite so long between, you know, where, before they want more food. But it'll be chock a block with every single, yeah. all those water soluble vitamins that your baby needs thirst quenching it'll be absolutely brilliant it just isn't quite so high in fat so, I can but, see messages so don't get hung up on that yeah just just be aware that you know collecting it may not have the same content so mix it about a bit yeah it's a perfectly good thing we've got questions we have got some questions coming okay. through let me have a quick peek i think we've got three 
So Alexandra has said, hi ladies, could you please explain again how to do hand expressing? She's 38 weeks now and wants to start learning. And as we've said on these sessions over and over, you don't have to hand express, but it's quite good to have the skill before you have your baby. So don't feel you have to collect this unless you've got a particular reason. So the sort of women that we might be really encouraging to collect the milk might be somebody who who has diabetes or gestational diabetes. And because their baby's more than likely going to be checked, their blood sugars will be checked after the baby's born. Um, and if those blood sugars dip, they're gonna need additional milk. And the best milk we can give them is your colostrum. So someone who's got diabetes will be actively encouraging to express in the antenatal period. Um, and and if also, I think if your baby's going to be a bit early, yeah. we tend to go through that with you. If, you, if you're an inpatient, yeah. we, we would sometimes come up and see you on, in the ward before you have your baby and talk you through how to hand express and you can do yeah. that before you while you're waiting to have your baby so if you're having mm. a cesarean say you can do some in the um, anaesthetic room while they're just getting stuff ready or in the room that you're waiting for to go to theatre you can start doing a little bit of hand expressing the day you're going to have your baby yeah. just to start collecting a little bit as well um, so we do come and talk to you about that and the staff should do the same on yeah. the on the antenatal rooms. But that if you you know if you are likely to be having your baby early, it is a discussion that needs to be a bit of a multidisciplinary team discussion, because yeah. um, obviously we don't want to put people into labour any earlier than than need be. So you know that's a discussion that we would be having. So that's why we don't recommend expressing for 37 weeks. So for you, Alexandra, 38 weeks is is a great time to start. So we've got some to breast for hide. Do you want to do it? We have, and uh, just to say that there is a really good uh, video on our website as mm -hmm. well. So if you go onto the uh, Women's Centre um, website which is on the John Radcliffe uh, website page so if you go onto the Women's Centre and then you go onto infant feeding or breastfeeding it will link you onto the infant feeding website then you can go down and click on resources or you can just put in bre um, breastfeeding can't you and it will yeah. come up with it. Um, it there's some uh, YouTube videos that we've done we won't get any Oscars for them but uh, <laughs> it's Alex and I and the rest of the and team and the rest of the team you see all the team then the others us. the others don't really want to do the face live so but they, they, they um, but well Sarah's you hear Sarah's voice you don't see Sarah uh, but you hear she does all the voiceovers else. yeah you see um, Elisa, but we you have see done um, how to do it and we've got some um, a great a lovely lovely mum that did it for us as mm. well uh, and showed you how to do it and collect it in a syringe. So that is also, a, you know, much more um, real. It's got on real breasts and, and real babies and real mums. So, um, you know, it's it's real time. So um, it's probably even more helpful. But do go to that website and have a little look. We've got a series of seven videos of various different things that you can look at that we talk about every week on here. Um, but that sort of just backs up what we're saying again. So, um, so hopefully you'll find that one helpful as well. But um, the most important thing is that you uh, don't do it too early and you've got something that you can collect it with, which is the syringe. The other thing to say while Naomi's looking for the syringe is that we actually have a uh, leaflet and if you go on to our web page, so if, if you do a search on Google OUH maternity um, feeding, our page will come up. So that's all you have to do, OUH maternity feeding and then it will come up with the links. But we also have um, a leaflet about collecting colostrum while you're pregnant and it goes through step by step what to do why you might want to be doing it, when to start, um, and it's all guidance in there. Anyway, Naomi's going to talk you through it. Actually, you can do the syringe. I'll right? do because the collecting. I have to hold onto my breast, otherwise it will fall <laughs> off. <laughs> we need to Velcro them. We, need we Velcro. do need Velcro, yeah. don't we? So I'm, go I'm not going to hold it onto there. But um, so uh, you, it's like a clock face. Your breast, you can do all the way around it. So um, it's wherever you put your fingers and wherever you're comfortable. But it's sort of. Um, opposite each other and so to start with you want to be very relaxed you've got to be in a very relaxed environment so um, oxytocin which is one of the hormones that lets down your milk is very shy and if you're stressed it's not going to let you have any and that's the same if you're breastfeeding if you're feeling observed or you're feeling um, stressed by anything you won't let down you, your milk won't come as quickly so always be relaxed when you're doing this always be safe always be comfortable and warm and uh, so that you uh, can get on and do it properly. <clears throat> you might want to massage your breast a little bit. So you will massage down round your breast with either with your fists or with your finger. You can use both hands um, and that will just help the flow of milk and it will warm things up a little bit. Um, and if you have had your baby, uh, then you can sniff your baby first. <laughs> Give a <laughs> bit smell of a cup gorgeous. And smell their head. It's That's absolutely so gorgeous. And also um, if you have have been separated from your baby, go and see your baby first and do some skin to skin if you can. Skin to skin really um, lets that oxytocin rip 
So, um, you know, you can get really But bearing in mind, response. Alexandra is, hasn't had her baby. She no. can picture in her head what her baby's visualize like. Visualise your yeah, baby visualize and what you baby. want to be doing with your baby afterwards. Yeah. And that will really help. So Think about the kicks that you're getting, where, where, which way your baby's lying, all those sort of things. Yeah, respond to your baby's needs and, and you know, have a really good look at your baby's face in your mind because that will really start to, for you to relax and imagine having your baby and cuddling it and that's really important. Um, and so that's sort of let the flow go and then make a C with your finger and your thumb and work from the base of the nipple, so the base of the nipple, and move back about two to three centimetres and the texture of the breast changes slightly so you can feel it slightly um, more lumpy and that's where the lactiferous ducts, the ducts that have got the milk in, sit. And then um, with your, it's like a, like a sort of a crab, you know, your lobster, your pincers. And so you, with that action, you're sort of pushing back and then you're imagining that those two pincers are going together, finger to thumb, and you're holding for four seconds and then releasing. You don't want to be doing it fast like this because that won't work. You've got to sort of do push back, long draws, pause, let go, push back, long, and pause and then as you start to get milk you can start then um, you collect the colostrum from the end of the nipple and sometimes it flows really freely and sometimes you get tiny little beads whatever happens is normal and sometimes you get sometimes nothing sometimes you get nothing absolutely and that's, that's also normal, too. normal. Um, and as you see the flow slow down if you're getting flow then you move your hands round like a clock face and you go right round the breast and uh, push back and hold and squeeze and then you go to the other side and you do the same. You can massage the breast both at the same time. You can go between the two. Swap to the other side and then do the same on that side. And when you've finished on that side, you go back to this side and do it again because everything started to flow by then. So you might find you get more out. And then you go back to that side and you do that mm. side again so that you're really working those lactiferous ducts and really um, getting that flow going. And that's it. So you maybe do it four times a day when you're pregnant. Yeah. Um, when you've had your baby, minimum eight if your baby's not feeding. If there's any, or you're separated. So I think things to remember when we when we are called, we will get bleat um, from the ward from level five, and they'll say to us that there's got a mum, but she can't hand express. And the two things that will make the biggest difference is finding the right place. So it's working your way back from the base of the nipple and looking for that lumpy, bumpy area in your breast, and then holding long enough. As Naomi said, it's a long hold. Keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. Release and go again. In and hold. Keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. Release, go again. So it's the find the right place, hold for long enough will make the biggest difference as to whether you have any joy with it or you don't. Um, so have a bit of a practice anyway, Alexandra, and all the best with it. And there's Naomi Here's some said, feedback. Maybe do it while you're listening to us <laughs> and then feed back to us and say whether it worked or not. Yeah. You're only going to see glimmers to yeah. begin with little glistening on the end of the nipple and then it builds up and builds up. We had a lovely mummy up here on level seven a few weeks back and the first day I encountered her, I think the baby was just 24 hours old, all she could get was glimmers. By the, so the beginning of the next morning she was getting 10 mils, by the end of the day she was getting 30. That's how quickly it changes. So even if you only see glimmers on the first time you're trying, don't be disheartened because it really changes very, very quickly. And if you find that your tummy's crumping a lot, then um, you're in the right. a little bit, but you're in the right, the right place. place. <laughs> but don't do too much yes, if you're, you know, if you're not ready. So, um, you know, if, if, you're, if you might find that you get some um, uh, activity in your tummy just with the tightenings and things. If you're getting lots of cracks and picks, it might stimulate them, which means that you're doing a good job and that's working. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. But let us know. My dear, she's 38 weeks, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, you'd be quite glad, yeah, I'm yeah, sure, now absolutely. to have your baby, wouldn't you? If you're ready to go, it'll work. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alicia has said, my baby's now eight weeks. She started coughing and choking during a breastfeed. I try and feed her slightly reclined, but it doesn't always help. She's also suffering with trapped gas and gets uncomfortable and wriggles during a feed. She does use nursing for comfort, but I'm worried she'll start associating the breast with being uncomfortable. Any tips, please? They're obviously not put off yet. So, um, sounds lovely. Sounds like you're doing a really good job. I would say that you need to revisit your positioning and attachment. Me too. Mm -hmm. You need to find um, your um, healthcare professional that can support you. It might be that you um, can see your health visitor at, at your eight-week check if she hasn't already seen you, and see if she can watch your positioning. 
um, but also um, OBS or La Leche, they are um, available for online consultations as well. So, you know, you could access them and they could watch you breastfeed to see if they could look at the latch to see if they can make it any deeper. I think um, you've got to look at the whole picture when you're doing this and, and it's very easy to, when you're not sore because mm. you've been breastfeeding for a couple of months now, that um, you don't let your baby go on the end. And I think one of the things that, that babies will do very happily is that you will um, take your breast to the baby or your baby will just attach themselves and suck the nipple into their mouth and you're not, because you're not sore you let them do it and actually they just suck to where they start suckling, not where the actual really good place is that they should be feeding. So you need to be um, holding your baby and taking your baby to the breast and giving them a really big mouthful and being really firm to put them on and that will allow the nipple to go a little bit further back into their mouth so that they can get a really, really good um, attachment and a really big mouthful. Lining them up so they can get on underneath the breast. So you're looking at uh, initially lining them up nose to nipple and it's more difficult when they're a bit bigger because um, you know the shape of everything changes but the principles are always the same and we show these pictures every week I think. Mm. Line them up nose to nipple. N you shouldn't see the nipple in the middle of the mouth so the nipple shouldn't be here. It shouldn't be here, it should be up at the nose level and the chin should be right underneath the breast there so that they can lift their head back. So when they then are um, gaping, which is what they will do if the breast is lined up in the right place, they will lift their head back, sniff the air, and that nipple is lined up to go just underneath the gum ridge, just underneath the gum ridge, and then it slides across the top of the mouth to the back of the throat. And if your baby's not quite got it as far back to the throat as they should have, the milk will pool in the mouth and they will start to splutter because it's, pre it's primed to go right down their throat, not pool in their mouth. And if they, if they get it in their mouth and in their cheeks, they, they can't suck, swallow and breathe and they get all discoordinated. And so it, it makes them splutter a bit. So it's probably the fact that, the, that you perhaps haven't got your baby quite far enough onto the um, breast in order to um, get a big mouthful so that's what you're looking for. I think it's bearing in mind babies have grown you know you've got an eight week old baby now Alicia so thinking about and like we never talked about this before we've got a small baby and a big baby so it is really helpful so if you think about how you're holding you're going to have the computer so if you think about your small baby you're going to have your small baby here and when your big baby comes you don't want them in the same plane you actually want to be bringing them over so if you imagine they want to be the same height so you're going to have a lot more baby coming round you this way but no more baby coming this way so think about nose to nipple bringing the baby round so you can see the difference you've got a small one and they just fit neatly in front of you you don't want to just put this baby in front of you you actually want to bring it round and tuck it round your body so it's always thinking about that nose to nipple as in the pictures that Naomi showed and just see if you can just be really firm and pop them onto um, from the shoulders. So you're taking you're taking your baby up from the shoulders. You're not pushing them that way. You're going up onto the breast. So your baby is coming. Can you see that? Is coming yep. straight up, up like that. You're not hooking them and putting yep. them on. You're coming straight up onto the breast, and their chin leads, and then they can um, get a really big mouthful and it goes right to the back of the throat. And if you get that right, then they, their behaviour changes. But also, if they're a little bit windy, it's because they're often getting um, not quite the right mix of milk. They haven't got onto the breast deeply enough to drain uh, the breast to get the next feed, uh, to make the next feed. So what they do is they tend to feed more frequently, which they get lots of um, what we call full milk. So it's lots of thirst quenching milk, but they're not getting the fat. So um, it's a bit like the drip breast milk, but it's better than that because they get fat and everything. But um, it's all good stuff. But actually, if they don't drain the breast properly, they don't get the fat as well. And so they tend to get this lactose lactase imbalance. And the lactase is the enzyme in the tummy. The lactose is in the milk. It's very sugary. Um, and it builds up a gas if it breaks down and, and uh, it can't be um, excreted or put into the guts. So it sits in the tummy and it makes them very gassy mm -hmm. and they get very explosive stools and tummy ache. And that's normally 
easily remedied if you get your position and attachment right. It takes you know a few days to turn it round, but you do see a difference if you get attachment at a uh, tip top. Well, if you get it right straight off, you'll see less. <coughs> hopefully, if that's what it is, lo less coughing and choking instantly. Instantly. Um, and then you'll hopefully see then the, the gas and everything starts to decline. I don't know, you haven't mentioned um, the poos, but often when you've got babies doing this, they might have a bit green frothy poos as opposed to always yellow poos. And they're slightly so, very explosive yeah, if they so. have been a bit gassy as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it might be that you just need to um, just tweak the attachment a tiny, tiny bit. bit. It's millimetres, it's never any more than that. And to the trained eye, um, it's really obvious, but to the non-trained eye, it's really hard to see. I always say, you know, I talk about that when I'm talking about positioning and attachment. That I have had three children, and my third one, at age one, I changed the way I fed him. And so, you know, I put up with all this not such great PNA positioning and attachment. And, and at one, I still had lots to learn. So he was already one. So there's always, know, there's room, for always room for improvement. So it's not, it's not nothing, you know, to say you, it's just, you've done an amazing job to get eight weeks, mm -hmm. but let's keep you going and making it fab for both let's of you. Let's make you both happy. Yeah. And feeding, you mentioned about feeding for comfort. You know, that's a really important part of breastfeeding. It's not just about food, it's a lot about comfort. And it's that reciprocal agreement between you and your baby think about that brain development that you're building up that responsiveness that relationship building you know every time you relate to your baby whether it is with a breast or whether it's a cuddle a kiss a song you know you know patting whatever you're boosting that baby's brain with loads of oxytocin because of that lovely you know sort of interaction between the two of you and that's what we want we want babies brains bathed brain, in oxytocin grows brain cells. it grows their brains makes happy babies yeah. happy children happy adults yeah. that's what so we're all can't looking spoil for the baby yeah can't cuddle them too much, can't love them too much. No, they will never spoil them. Mm. Not until they know about it. <laughs> they certainly don't know about it when they're eight weeks old. Yeah. Don't no. let anyone tell you that. No. Anna has said, I'm pregnant with my second baby. I have a nine month old girl. Well done, you. Can I use my express machine when I get to 38 weeks to harvest milk? My milk reduced rapidly when I got pregnant, so my baby girl has been fully on formula for a while now. Wouldn't normally recommend using a pump. Um, we would normally use your hand because colostrum is in such small amounts but by all means use your pump afterwards that would be a great time to use it Anna um, you know if you had problems before you might want to have a quick chat with us and um, we are doing antenatal appointments for people who've really struggled um, people who've got pre-existing problems that might affect their lactation so you know by all means give us a shout we can have a chat with you on the phone about what happened last time and how we can um, try and ensure that it doesn't happen this time or at least give you the best chance possible so I think it might be worth you giving us a call Anna um, but I wouldn't yeah. use a pump at this stage and I think also um, taking milk off in, before you've had your baby doesn't make any difference no. to your supply afterwards so if you pump more it doesn't mean that you're going to make more milk afterwards because um, you've got a placenta in situ yeah. and as long as you've got a placenta it doesn't send uh, feedback to the hormones to make the milk. Mm. So when your placenta is delivered, then your body will start to produce milk and the messages will go to the brain to start to produce milk. So that won't make any difference if you pump or um, hand express, it's not gonna change the supply that you make afterwards. Mm. And if you are pumping, it may reduce your skill because um, you need to be hand expressing in the first two or three days where you've got tiny, tiny volumes mm. and that taps into the receptors in your breast much more effectively than if you are using a breast pump. Um, if you're actually targeting areas which are f have tiny amounts in them, it's much more responsive when you're hand expressing and you can get much more out of your ducts and it's much easier to collect um, in small volumes. It, it will stick to the sides of your pump funnel if you have very small amounts and it's very sticky and then you lose it. So that's why we, we say to use uh, very, something very small to collect it that it won't stick to the sides of. So it, it's probably more effective if you learn to do hand expressing before you've had your baby because you'll have the skill to do it afterwards and that will help you. Yeah. But I think you know if you did have a lot of problems last time then by all means give us a call and we're more than happy to have a chat with you on the phone. So good luck with that Anna. Uh, Holly has said, Hi ladies, just wanted to say thank you Alex for supporting us on level 5 last week. Baby Finn is now feeding really well and actually gained on his birth weight at this 5 day check. Thank you for the email Holly, I did get it and I'm really sorry I didn't reply. It got forwarded to me by one of the team. But congratulations and that's really, really good news. So uh, it just shows how wonderful it can turn around. He's going. He wasn't playing ball that day but he's made up for it since. So well done Holly, thank you. 
Anyway, nice to hear from you. Um, Virginia has said, hi ladies, I can see one of you had a haircut. Looks nice. That'll be Naomi. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, She's very shorter. glamorous, Naomi. <laughs> Could you talk it's be about done again next week? <laughs> it's that long ago. <laughs> Could you talk about laid back position things? I tried it a few times and found that putting the baby on the breast was quite complicated. He ended up either with a squished nose or twisted body. He's almost seven weeks now. If that makes any difference, so um, I think it's literally just laying back. <laughs> so. And there's no skill required in this positioning. I think uh, find yourself in a comfy place, and it depends how big your baby is at six or seven mm. weeks. Some are huge, and some aren't so big. Um, so you might find I don't know if you can see because I can't do it. If I'm, um, I don't know if you took the. I turn it round. Took the phone down a little bit. Otherwise, I would just try not to wobble it too much. Yeah, we've got the radiator in front of us. Um, so you might find you go across your tummy like that, but um, the whole thing is that you don't hold under the arms because that just puts your baby's hands in front of their mouth and it becomes a problem. So if you bring your hands lower, which makes mums frightened because the head does bob a lot, but by seven weeks your baby's got lots of control of its neck. It's got, you know, it's very big, your baby is at seven weeks. It's lovely and grown up. Um, so um, you hold round and secure the tummy and then you sit them across your knee and you might actually need to stretch your leg out in front of you if you um, if your baby's quite tall or your breasts are quite low if your breasts are higher then you might find that you um, need to put your foot on something or you can cross your knee over um, and then you just lean your baby forward so imagine that and then allow them so their hands may well come to either side of your breast and then you let them bob like that and then they will open their mouths and attach, but they need to come up from underneath. So if you've got your nipple here, they sort of need to be slightly underneath it so they can lift their head back and attach in the same way, but it's hands free. Um, and then you can bring your arm round and, and let your baby rest there in that position. Now, if your breasts are a little bit lower or your baby's much bigger, you can put it across your body like that and try it in the same position, but you're slightly across, you can do that. Some mums prefer to be sitting a little bit further forwards when they're doing this so that they are more upright. It depends on your baby and how, but uh, if they're further, if they like that, their head may fall back a little bit more um, so that uh, you might find that difficult to deal with. Um, and so uh, you might find to work with gravity that you just lean back a little bit more and that just helps them go onto the breast. But it is hands free. Um, some people call it the koala hold. So that's just holding holding on like that's a, a Chippy Norton up. name, isn't it? That came from Chippy. <laughs> that's Sharon's way of saying it, um, and Chippy, and uh, so that might support, but it is hands free. So you shouldn't have to shape your breast or push your baby's head on or anything like that. You know, we don't like to see that ever. But um, you, your baby should self-attach, and that's all part of it. And they do this when they're first born. They do a breast crawl if you're leaning down, and they crawl to the breast and attach, and they just. Uh, are in control and babies love being in control. They love to be in charge going on and coming off and not feel that they're being held and they can come off when they want and they tend to be much more relaxed about feeding. If you've got a baby that's newborn you might find that that's too much a step too far with the head bobbing because some babies just really um, struggle to uh, keep their head still because it's, it's the natural um, pattern that they have before they attach is they bob their head to attach and some mums find that just too difficult to cope with they think their head's going to fall off which by the way it won't um, but uh, you feel it well and it's difficult so you might find just lying your baby this is what I call face planting I don't think there's anything in the, on the internet about this so don't try and find it um, but uh, the baby will be face down and they literally don't do this like this at home will you um, but they literally face down <laughs> okay and um, you just plonk your baby on top so their tummy button is on your opposite nipple and their feet are under your armpit almost and you just literally let them bob and go on and that's a really good so if anybody's watching on the postnatal ward now have a go because you'll find in bed you're about 45 degrees you're no flatter than that and uh, just plonk your baby on top of your breast and then you can bring your arm around and support your baby and that's a very uh, it's a very hands-free way of feeding your baby so you might find that another simple way for for the first couple of weeks and then you might want to progress because your baby's head will be much stronger by then to sitting up that way if you want to try it okay have a go and see Let's back. Back. make sure that's in the right place that looks fine 
that should do. <laughs> right, so that was... So hopefully that helps. Have a little go and then let us know how you get on. That was for Virginia. That was a little bit. Let's back a bit. Okay. Hopefully you can still oh. see us. Yeah. <laughs> Abigail has come on, we've met Abigail before, just want to say a big thank you for your help identifying a high soft palette and a couple of a couple of months ago the painful latch disappeared by eight weeks and baby Amos is now a very happy and chubby 16 week old still going strong with breastfeeding. You clever person. Well done Abigail, well done, that's all your work, that's amazing. It's hard work isn't it but yeah. you've got through it and you've done so much for your baby in the first few months. Alexandra's come back and said thank you, she's going to give it a go. Good Brilliant. Go for it. Report back. Yeah. Charlotte is still on holiday in Devon. Ooh. Hello, Charlotte. You've had and a wonderful Alicia. Of weeks, That's haven't fantastic. You? Haven't you been lucky with the weather? Mm. But it's been lovely. You've been seeing your mum. Uh, she says, Hi, from Devon. From Devon, uh, her and Alicia are down on the beach and enjoying the seaside. Um, Very been, envious. Having a meal and, and always want to watch you talk. Ah, oh, thank you. Oh, to be in the sea, eh? Yeah, lovely. You, yeah, you would be. <laughs> Maybe not me. Not so much. Maybe that's been half Portuguese. It needs to be a bit warmer. <laughs> um, Anna has said, thanks, that's really helpful. Really useful information about and about the placenta. I'll not use the pump and hand express. Then there's more effect, that, as it's more effective. I really want to give it... Um, Oops, it's just skipped down. Uh, give it, get it right this time, so we'll give you a call when the baby's born. Absolutely give do. us a call before the baby's born, because we can talk about what happened before, actually, Anna. So give us a quick call before, and then we can have a chat about what happened last time and what we can hopefully sort of Achieve. maybe change, yeah. or whatever, put in place to make sure things go slightly better this time. So definitely give us a call before this one comes. Holly's come back with a lovely heart. Well done, Holly. It's lovely um, and thin. Sarah has said that Molly is nine weeks when she's feeding every every so often it's as if she stops breathing or catches her breath. Is this to do with the latch not being deep enough? At times it can be a little scary. Hmm. I think, um, have you talked to your doctor about that? Have yeah. You, have you had that checked out just to make sure everything's film okay? Her. I would film it while it's happening so yeah you can take it and show your GP and have a discussion with them. It could be that um, uh, that, that you're not quite deeply enough attached and um, is there any colour change in your baby? If your baby's changing colour from, you know, sort of pinky to more dusky colour then you absolutely should be talking to somebody when it's happening as well mm -hmm. and, and but definitely, um, you know, get checked out as it's happening. Um, so I wouldn't just sit there and think everything's okay. Um, I w yeah, definitely film it, but I would look at your attachment, is the nose free and uh, is the nipple as far back to the throat as possible so that they can suck, swallow and breathe because sometimes it's a little bit more uh, difficult for them to deal with if they're getting a, a fa fast letdown and uh, they get a large amount of milk in their mouths pooling at the back uh, and that makes them a bit flustered. But I would get it checked out and, yeah. and video it so that you can show them when it's mm. happening, get somebody to video it for you when it's happening, if you've got someone near you, so that you can see. You can show it, someone. Yeah, so what show it's someone. And, and do you have a bit of an oversupply? Um, you know, if you've got lots and lots of milk and your breasts are very full all the time, it might be that your positioning needs to be looked at, and it might be that you need to see somebody to get your positioning checked. You can talk to us on the phone if you want to. Yeah. I'm just scanning the messages because I was sure I saw one pop up and maybe the person's taking it down again. But just to say, if I've, if I've missed questions, I think we've done all of them so far, um, please, you know, if you want to ask a question, pop it back. I'm sh sure I remember, because I always scan through and see what's coming up, so I have a rough idea what to, um, what to what's coming. But I, was, I can't now see it. So it might be that you've taken it down, whoever put the question up, so I didn't see who it was. Um, but if you want to put it back, that's fine, by all means do. Um, but if I've missed it, if I, if you think you've sent a question through and I haven't, we haven't ans answered it, then pop it through again, please. I can't see it there. So, um, it was about specialist formulas, but not visible at the moment. We were going to have a quick chat about nipple shields, mm, weren't we? Yeah. So the reason we thought we'd talk about nipple shields is they keep cropping up. It's one of those cyclical things. You know, we go through phases when um, everybody thinks their baby's got thrush, and then, or everybody's told their babies have thrush, and then we have periods of time where there's a lot about, um, or tongue tie is a very, a very common thing that we hear a lot about. And we have periods of time where we don't see many nipple shields, and then we suddenly see an absolute flush of them. Um, so a nipple shield, if you don't know, looks like this, and it fits on the breast, like this. And originally they were devised 
um, to help mothers when they were sore. Well, as far as we're concerned, that's just a sticking plaster and doesn't solve anything. Um, you know, it isn't, if you're, if you're sore, the answer to that is positioning and attachment. Always. Um, and that's the first starting point. And on occasions, it could be that a baby has a raised palate or a, or a tongue tie, but we would find that out by doing an oral assessment and watching feeding. So the, the drawback with these is that if you use them in the early days, before your milk comes in, then actually you're not going to drive your milk supply because there's a piece of plastic between you, you and your baby. So we, this is what we keep seeing. We keep seeing them being used quite early on. Um, and so they really, they have a place. They have a place for some women who struggle to get the baby to attach. And we do use them in clinic uh, for babies that we are struggling to get to attach to the breast. Maybe they've, you know, for one reason or another, didn't go to the breast at birth, don't quite understand how the breast works, do understand how a bottle works. And this is like a halfway house. And we've had lots of bottles. They may struggle to be comfortable near the breast tissue. So this can often get a baby feeding at the breast, remove the need for a mother to be expressing um, and be this fantastic halfway house. And sometimes we can then persuade the baby to come off them afterwards, but not always. And that's totally in the baby's you know, court. That's up to them when they stop using a nipple shield. But the risk of using them in the early days is that you are going to impact on your milk supply. So we would highly recommend that they are not used in the early days. And when I mean early days, I mean before your milk comes in and before your milk is fully established. So whilst they have a place and can be really useful for getting a baby that's not attaching to feed from the breast, we would encourage anyone to get their milk supply fully established mm -hmm. before they think about using a shield. And we use them, we do use them, and they're a very useful tool. But if you're using it because you're sore or the baby's not attaching in the early days, it, they're not ideal because they can have a really negative impact on your milk supply. And we do find women who have used shields early on then really struggle to push their milk supply as the time goes on. So if it is suggested to you or, you know, whether by a member, you know, sort of a healthcare professional or a family friend or whatever to use a shield, please postpone using a shield until you've established your milk supply. And you've got milk. Yeah. Because I think if you've got colostrum, it just gets stuck on the inside and your baby doesn't get anything. Yeah. So they're, they're not getting the tiny drops that we're talking about all the time in the syringes. Yeah. These, you know, these tiny volumes that we're talking about in the syringe, 0.1 of a mil, doesn't go anywhere in, in a nipple shield. It's lost. And so your baby's losing out on valuable tiny bits of calories and uh, goodness by it's just getting stuck on or not coming at all because you're not able to get a really good attachment to get the flow of the colostrum there. So unless, I would say, unless you, you know, you can get uh, lots of milk coming out when you're pumping, it's it's not going to be beneficial to you. And mm. it will, you get 30% less volume through a nipple shield than you do not using a nipple shield, approximately. Um, and they're much finer than they used to be. They used to be much more rubbery and really thick. They're, so they're you very can thin feel now. They're very thin now, but it still does impact how the baby attaches. And you've got to set your baby up to do that asymmetrical latch that we've showed you on that picture earlier, where they're coming up from underneath. Now, put the shield you, on and do it. If you put the shield here, the temptation is just to put your baby like a bottle on the end of the nipple here. So your baby is here. And what they need to be is they need to be on here like that so their mouth is on the breast underneath milking the next feed to ask it to be made so if you've just got your nipple shield and you've got your baby just on the end there they're not asking the breast to make the next mm. feed and so it doesn't happen so you then drop your milk supply and uh, milk production goes and then there's lots of tears and then your baby has to have a bottle afterwards because they have a breast feed and then you have to pump and then you have to give a bottle and so it's you know goes into that triple cycling uh, um, cycle of feeding, which is so punishing for lots of mums. So if you can avoid it in the early days, don't use it. If you're washed with milk, it, your baby will get plenty if you use a nipple shield. But if you haven't, it's really creating more work for you because you you have to top your baby up afterwards as well. So you have to pump and get more milk, as well as use the nipple shield to feed. So you've got to work on milk production and then with that you can do anything. If you've got lots of milk, you can do anything. If you have a low supply, it's really hard to get back on that and, yeah. and catch up. It's exhausting. So don't make it a problem by using these in the early days because you're a bit sore or your baby's not attaching or somebody's told you your nipples are flat because um, your baby doesn't know what a flat nipple is. It just <laughs> knows your nipple 
doesn't know what a flat nipple or a big nipple or a small nipple or an inverted nipple is. It just knows your nipple. Mm. And uh, so, um, you know, that's, that's somebody else's model of the world that they're talking to you about. And your baby only knows your model. Mm. So use your model and your baby will learn to deal with it. Maybe not as quickly as a baby that hasn't got those, um, you know, that, that has, you know, been familiarised with breastfeeding and, and is attaching more easily. But, you know, they all work it out if you let them. But if you create problems, that makes more problems later and it just reduces your supply and it, it isn't helpful. And there will always be somebody who says they fed their baby for a year with nipple shields and it was fine. And there are. And there are, there are lots. people. And, you know, we're not purists. We, we know that um, it's often better to have a baby feeding at the breast with a nipple shield than pumping and giving bottles. And mums are often delighted to be able to feel their baby at the breast when they go mm. on. But they, pretty soon, I think most mums that are on this forum listening to us will say they can't wait to get rid of them once they've got them on. They want to get them off as soon as they've got them on. But when you're stuck in a cycle of pumping, getting yeah. a baby on with a nipple shield is definitely an improvement. Yeah. Um, so which is why we do use yeah. them. But it, it's just it's a cautionary note. Please don't use them in the early days and before your milk is established because it really will impact on your supply. It really will. It doesn't come without problems. No, and and your baby will. They do get addicted. Yeah, they they love them. And well, some babies will love them, and they won't. And they literally go to the breast and go, don't know what to do here. So so you know, if you please, please. If anyone suggests them, I mean, we know people who come in with them because they've been told it's a good idea. And giving them for, as a present. Yeah, so please hold off, hold yeah. off. Yeah. Right. Um, so, um, we heard back from Sarah um, about her baby Molly, and she said she doesn't change colour, which I'm That's really pleased lovely for us <coughs> to, hear. to hear about. Um, and she's going to contact her GP and record the baby, which is, sounds yeah. like a really good yeah. idea. I think that's very sensible. It does and sound like something like just simple positioning and attachment, um, and uh, that, <coughs> that can be improved. So I just um, need to rule anything else out. Don't right? rule anything else out, but it sounds like your baby's just not quite far enough onto the breast, and that might change feeding. But do get someone as soon as possible to uh, check, check out your feeding and support, support you. Um, there's a bit of a theme today. We've got Rosie on here saying she's struggling with fast and fast flow and overproduction, which can make Annabelle quite overwhelmed and fussy at the breast. Is there anything that can be suggested to ease this, balance it out? She's four weeks old and generally gaining weight fine. It can just be quite distressing for her and for and for her mummy. And sometimes it sounds like she's choking a bit. Thank you. So that's been a bit of a theme today, isn't it? We've had a bit of other similar ones. So um, I think again, it's back to Rosie looking at your positioning and attachment, making sure you've got it as really as good, you know, as perfect as you can. Um, trying a reclined position, so laid back, so gravity's working on the side of your baby, may help as well. So you know, Naomi's already just shown some laid back positions may help as well. But making sure you you're getting that your baby on as brilliantly as you can. Think about that asymmetrical attachment that we've already mentioned, and you know we can't overemphasise how important it is to get that as spot on as you can to give your baby the best chance to remove milk effectively um, and not let it start pooling in the mouth which is possibly what's happening here I mean if you've got a real issue with overproduction then some people might choose to do what's called block feeding um, so that would be that you continue feeding on one side for a number of feeds and then swap to the other and then this feedback inhibitor of lactation uh, called fill feedback inhibitor of lactation will try and bring your milk supply down so might be worth having a chat with someone about that if that is what's happening to you and um, before you go and do that without any support. You can drop your supply significantly and then right. you can be in the other position, yeah. so particularly think, before six weeks, that you don't have enough milk. So, so I think use it with care and I think that um, often the overstimulation is because you um, have not quite got your position deep yeah. enough and it's overstimulated your breasts. So Sometimes uh, it's from something like polycystic ovarian syndrome. Some, most women find they have less milk, but some women mm. have oversupply. So if you're suffering from that, it might be worth giving us a chat as well. Um, but it's nearly always, always um, just quite not deep enough onto the breast. And just think about where the suck reflex is on your baby's roof of its mouth. And exactly. it, it's, it, it, but it starts much further mm. forward. So as soon as it hits that, if you're allowing yeah. them to suck the breast in, they will start suckling as soon as the nipple gets to mm. that point not where it really, really should be to yeah. get good feeding. So if you let them just 
go yeah. on and you're not sore. Because you want to be right back here. If right you let back them just nibble at the end, out. they will suck and come on and off and on and off. And um, they will feed frequently because they're not draining the breast deeply enough and getting the fatty milk. They will feel more hungry more often, so they will then feed more frequently. They usually get quite fat because the lactose has got lots of <laughs> sugar in it, so they get lots of weight. So people say, well, your baby's gaining weight beautifully, mm -hmm. pooing and weeing, because you have hundreds of poos because you're giving lots and lots of milk. Um, but they're not happy, you're not happy, mm -hmm. and um, they, they have very explosive stools. And, and if you just tweak them a little bit further, and it goes back to the beginning of this session when we talked about lactose, lactose imbalance, you will change the behaviour and you'll change the milk composition if you allow a really deep latch and they can drain the breast properly and then the, the, it damps down your milk production. It's like dominoes, if one thing is right everything else stays put and if one thing is wrong the whole process um, falls apart and that tends to be what happen, happens with breastfeeding. If you just don't quite get it right at the very, you know, the very point of where you feed everything else starts to go upside mm. down as well and it's, it is quite an easy thing to resolve. So, um, you know, make sure you get somebody to support you or just look at what you're doing and see if you can get that deeper latch. It's a buzzword, isn't it? Mm, absolutely. And I, I was just thinking about the, the lactose. We talk about lactose, it's so important, really. I mean, there's a huge part of, you know, and what makes it different in other mammals is that one, we are one of the mammals that has the most lactose, and that's because we're growing our baby's brains. So, um, you know, that sugar is so important. You know, if you think about, you know, why do people go into comas with diabetic comas lack of sugar so sugar is absolutely crucial for the brain and that's why our, our milk with these huge brains that our babies have and that are growing rapidly and um, you know it's so important that we have so much sugar in our brain in our milk so uh, much as we're saying about their gaining weight it's really important for the brain and other animals have lots of fat they're much yeah. much higher fat because they have to get up and start walking about yeah. and grazing or swimming or yeah. whatever they do um, they have to or they need fat to keep them warm in, in cold climates. Mm -hmm. So um, that's very different development. So, you know, it's unique to you. It's, it's human milk is unique to human babies. Yeah. And uh, it's very specific to our growth needs. Charlotte has come back and said she, uh, that Alicia's loving the beaches and the parks. I bet she is. I bet she is. You've been so lucky with the weather. I bet she's had an ice cream. <laughs> She's one now. <laughs> Can you imagine? I remember my ones having ice cream for the first time. It's very exciting. They thought it was amazing. Rosie has said, thank you. That makes sense in terms of checking the latch and the knock-on impact of stimul stimulation and milk composition. Sorry I missed the earlier part of the session. No apologies needed, Rosie. But we, it's, it's actually... Bedtime it's, reading. It's so funny because you, you sometimes get these themes that come up. Though, but it was the themes. It's been themes today. Yeah, look back and just listen. Yeah, if you have a second. Um, it's 23 minutes past. So just... Uh, thank you. We haven't got any other questions. That was Rosie coming on there. But... Um, We've talked about nipple shields and we talked about, what did we talk about at the beginning? Um, we talked about hackers. Oh yes, the hackers as well, yes. So all the different things you can get. Mm. Um, for, and, but you know, really anything you need is a set of arms, isn't it, to feed mm. a baby. Mm. So, um, but uh, some Ten people like meals. to buy pumps. So um, and it, we, we've actually done a, one of our videos that we did that yeah. um, we've mentioned a few times. Um, one of them is about pumping, talking about how to use a pump. Um, and one of the things we say is that actually it's much more to do with how you use the pump rather as opposed to the pump that you buy. And you can buy pumps, you know, for £250 is the LV, um, which is a single pump that goes into the bra. Um, you can go as cheap as something like a Bella Baby that is just over £40. So there's a complete spectrum on price and those are both electric. The hospital ones are about 2000 Yeah, the hospital grade ones, yeah. yeah. But then the hospital yeah. grade companies make smaller ones which are also extremely good. So you yeah, can buy mini Ardos and mini Medalas. So they're both good pumps. Mm. Um, so there's some really good pumps out there and you don't have to pay a fortune for them. But you don't also have to have a pump is the other thing to say because you know feeding is going well. You don't don't need to give milk in a bottle so it's only if you want to uh, or you have to so don't feel that you have to have one and these days when you can do Amazon Prime um, you know many people will choose not to buy one and only buy one if they actually need one because they'll know they can get one within 24 hours or so which is very often what happens when we see mothers on the wards we'll go and see them and say you really could do with a pump also to say that many of our community midwives have pumps that they mm. can loan out, big hospital grade ones. Obviously they don't have um, 
an indefinite number, so it is, it is a bit of luck of the draw as to whether they've got them in at the time, but that's the first place we would always go if we meet you um, or you are in need of a pump. And it's always worth contacting your community midwives first and foremost to see if they've got one they can lend you. And they're normally lo loaned out for about a week or two weeks, which would give you time to either solve whatever's going on, get your supply up, get the baby attaching, or if you need to, buy your own pump, um, which you know, works quite well, gives you time. So. So I don't know if we've got anything else on this here to do. This is a short one today, it's 26. Mm. Last week we did, it was, uh, was about an hour and a half we did last week. So. <laughs> lots of questions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think what's the, what's the thing that's changed in the hospital this week? We're doing lateral flow testing on oh, yes. all the visitors that are coming in. So if you've got a clinic appointment with us, you would be um, expected to do a lateral flow test either before you come if you've got them at home or you have to come early for your appointment, so at least probably more than half an hour because there's a bit of a queue to have them done um, uh, if you if you need to come into the hospital. So everybody has been asked to do lateral flow testing for appointments and things, so or visiting. So that's that's changed this week in the hospital and that would impact our services in the fact that um, we do ask all mums to do one before they come or call both people that are coming to clinic to do one before they turn up. Uh, just to protect the us and yourselves. So I think allow yourselves that extra time, you know, and if you are, your partner's coming in to visit, you know, allow that time to come in, either come with a, a test already done or allow the time for that test to be done before you come up or up. So, um, because unfortunately they won't add the half an hour onto the end of your visiting time, it will still be the same visiting time. But, um, um, oh, we've got some more. We've got, I've just seen another one pop up. It's Claire. Hello, Claire. I think we heard from you last week. Hi, both. Can't believe I'm asking this as a former oversupply sufferer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could help the other lady, yes, didn't you? Yes, advice. you did struggle. But do you think it's possible to increase my supply again with pumping? I was hoping to send baby to the childminder with some express milk. He'll be 15 oh. months old. Wow. Any ideas? Appreciated. Many, many thanks as ever. Just oh, add the pumping could, yeah, in. Yeah, you could try. You made a full supply, and so you can yeah. bring it back if you need Definitely it. Definitely bring I it think back. your um, little one will be delighted to have more milk in the breast if he, if he finds it. Yeah. But uh, it might work. Yeah, you might be able to increase production. You know, if your baby's um, poorly and they suffer more because they've been feeling mm -hmm. a bit low, then they will do that themselves naturally, and they'll want to suckle and comfort on you. Um, and so pumping does the same if you yep. pump. Uh, you'll find that you'll have a little bit more there. So maybe just pumping, often mums find they have more milk than they need first thing in the morning. So maybe you just start pumping after the morning feed, Claire, and see, you know, keep doing it. And do what we've, we've talked about before, and which we wouldn't have talked to you about it because we were trying to bring your supply down. But what we tend to say to mums is to watch the flow. So don't forget clocks, we're going to be guided by the flow. So. You know, look at your baby, think about your baby, like we were saying about with the hand expressing, um, get the oxytocin flowing, um, then get your pump kits on, pump while you see milk, as it begins to slow or stop, have a 30 second break, and then start that pump up again, and then when it begins to slow or stop, have a 30 second break, and then start the pump up again. And that will really sort of just keep requesting a little bit more, and what you should see is each time you do it, you'll get a little bit more. Um, and then you, your body will respond so that you can do your morning feed mm. and feed and um, mm. have an expressed um, bottle for the, for the child minders in the day. So I can't believe your baby's that old now. It's amazing. Aren't you doing well? Yeah, incredible. And, and I think from the point of view of um, Rosie, it's reassuring, uh, hopefully, for her to see that you know you have struggled with an oversupply. And I know we've talked about it on here a few times, um, that, uh, that you're out the other side, which is lovely, because it is quite debilitating having an oversupply. You, you end up being sort of tied to your pump because you can't go too far. That's really, it can be very, you know, hard work. Well, I think we're there, aren't we? It's 10.29, so we've had some great questions as always, and um, hopefully we'll hear from a couple of you. Well, Anna, I think, hopefully before her baby's born, but the others, I think, will wait well, We've got through quite a lot today. We've had some great questions, lots of really good things that we've gone through, and um, don't forget to look at our um, videos and things if you want to just uh, do a little bit more uh, investigation with um, you know different bits of uh, pumping or positioning and attachment or um, what else is on there hand expressing mm -hmm. would you say so um, responsive bottle responsive feeding responsive bottle feeding and also things like how do you know if your baby's getting enough milk that's always one that parents worry about massively in the 
uh, early days and you know the last thing we want is you to come back into hospital because your baby's lost weight so um, you know make sure that you know about recognizing signs of that so that you don't get caught into that having to come back in because your baby's lost uh, you know a significant amount of weight it's worth watching that video just for Naomi's creative powers, actually, because you've got to admire the composition of the poos in, her, in the it's nappies. Because, uh, because Naomi had used a concoction of different products to make the nappies look really realistic. So, you know, if you get, to, if you if you're interested in having a look at some of these videos, the the one that, about how do you know your baby's getting enough milk is really good. That's going to make you all yeah, go and watch it. It's isn't so it? so funny. So if you can guess. See if you can guess what I use to yeah. come back next week and tell us. <laughs> well, no, you're not here next week. So <laughs> Naomi's not here next week. It'll be me on my own. Um, so anyway, and the other one that's on there um, is the relationship and responsiveness one, which was done by Elisa, which is lovely. It's all talking about, you know, we've mentioned it a few times on here, how important it is, that closeness and that relationship with your baby and how important it is for their brain development. You know, it's always we're always thinking about that sort of that bond between parents and baby, and how you're building these happy babies because that's what you're doing. You're growing a happy baby. You know. Anyway, so have a good week. Oh, Claire's gone. Okay, perfect. It's, I know it's crazy to think about needing more milk after I was drowning <laughs> in it for ten months. Uh, oh, maybe don't tell Rosie that bit. <laughs> I was starved after the morning feed. Thank you. Baby's twelve months oversupply. Fits from ten months. Congratulations, that's wonderful news. Anyway, thank you very much, one and all, for all your lovely questions. Lovely questions and um, and we shall say goodbye. Okay, so uh, it'll be me on my week. own next week. Yeah, no, <laughs> on my own. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi will be off enjoying yourself on holiday. Bye, one and all. Bye.